<laughs> we got an even bigger plane. All right, everybody. So yeah, as you saw, we got an even bigger plane. So we love the Carbon Cub so much. And uh, like I said in, in the Carbon Cub video, this hobby's a sickness. The planes just keep getting bigger and bigger. So an X-Cub followed us home. We found a really good deal on one on uh, an X-Cub on Craigslist. Thank you very much, Paul, being such a cool dude and uh, keeping really good care of the X-Cub. But here it is, Mary. Look at the size of this box. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we uh, like I said, we bought it used, but it was unopened. Uh, gentleman named Paul, really cool guy. So let's get this bad boy open here. Oh, let me help you. Mary, help me with the lid. We're gonna set it on floor. Lift the end. I only have <laughs> two hands. Hey. So we cut the tape on the bottom, obviously. So we just lift right off. Okay. And just put it down like that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's see what we got here. So the Carbon Cub, um, what was the wingspan on the Carbon Cub? I don't even remember. It was like 90 inches? Nine. Yeah, 90. Was it? I think it was 90 inches. This is 116 inches. So this one's almost 10 feet, 10 foot wingspan. This is a right in between a third scale and a quarter scale. So Ali, the guy who designed this and the Carbon Cub, so this is like a one third point five scale. So yeah, about a 10 foot wingspan, this thing's a beast. It's bigger than our couch. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. So the X-Cub, just like the Carbon Cub, is based on a full scale aircraft. Uh, Cub Crafters makes it. And this is kind of their top of the line aircraft. Um, has a fuel, in real life, you know, full scale, has a fuel injected engine. Uh, it doesn't have, pulleys and cables for the controls. It actually has pull, push-pull tubes and they hide it through the struts and um, lots of composite parts. This thing's kind of a state-of-the-art plane. It's a uh, constant speed propeller. So you got feather the pitch of the propeller. So a lot of people kind of like, ah, it's not really a Cub because it's kind of gets into a complex aircraft type stuff. But to me, it's an awesome cub. So obviously here's the, uh, you know, vertical stabilizer rudder. Looks great, I don't see any holes. You know, you get the typical, the wrinkles you gotta get out. That's, no, that's normal guys, just like the carbon cub, remember? Those wrinkles, they'll go away at the end. Uh, this does use Robart hinges. So carbon cub, if you remember, you use the fabric CA hinges. These have what's, what are called Robart hinges. There's like plastic hinge, pin type. So we'll have to be epoxying those in later. So yeah, that looks really nice. We got a sticker sheet. So just like the Carbon Cub, you get you know, your end numbers, some logos. Very last step, that'll be. So we got horizontal stabilizer and the two elevator halves. Let's see the best way to open this, probably on this end. So yeah, we've been slowly Ordering all the parts up for this bad boy. Making sure we have everything we need before we start building it. Come on. Oh boy. There it goes. Is it just the sticky on the back? Yeah, it's just the, there. It's just the plastic gets stuck on the, <clears throat> all right. So yeah, horizontal stab, elevator halves. You can see the Robart hinges in there again. Uh, this this is this is such a big plane, so it uses um, uh, two elevator servos and also double control horns. So the control rod actually goes between two control horns. So they kind of sandwich wow. between okay. two. So there's actually four cool. control horns, two rods. Yeah, when you get into the planes this big, this looks perfect. Part looks straight, no rips. No puncture holes. I'm gonna set the stickers aside over here. Or decals, whatever you wanna call them. But you can already see if you remember from the carbon cup. I mean, this these parts are way bigger. Oh yeah, here's some exciting stuff. Oh, oh boy. <clears throat> here's our first wing half. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh man. 
This plane is massive. Like I said, it's about, uh, it's 116 inches. So four inches less than 10 feet. Wow. I just love the colors on this X-Cub. It is so beautiful. The Carbon Cub is you. so pretty too, but something about this white, red, gray. It's just a very classy looking aircraft to me. I just love the look of a Cub. Oh man. Let me back up here, look how big that is. Look at this thing. This is one wing half. I mean, this is bigger than some of the, the whole airplanes that we have. Yep. So Ali made a, a bunch of upgrades to this. Um, he kind of upgraded the whole light system. So the carbon cub lights, if you guys remember, they were two double A's and a lot of people complained about them because they really weren't that good. So he really made some nice lights in this one and you can run it on a 3S LiPo. So the lights in this are a lot better. And I do want to point out something too, I forgot. So another cool thing he did on this plane is on the rudder, there's actually an LED light that goes in here too. Oh, it has a tail light. So you run a wire. Yep, you run a wire through here at some point during the build. And uh, cool. yeah, you'll, you'll actually have a tail light or a you know navigation light. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so the lights are really cool. You can use a 3S LiPo. Flaps look good, or sorry, the flaps are over here obviously. And the flaps are kind of unique on this plane. The linkages and stuff are internal. So it's kind of a, a weird thing they got going on. You know, you can see the the, mm -hmm. the rod isn't hooked up, of course, but it's kind of strange the way they do it because the linkage is all internal. Where, but and then the aileron, the linkage will be on the outside, but the flap, everything's on the inside. So mm -hmm. it's kind of unique. You can see the hinges are different. Oh, they're yeah. metal. I don't know if that's how the real X Cub is, but. But yeah, I mean, other than that, it's pretty pretty much similar to the, you know, the, the carbon cub wing, the struts, the jury struts, and all that. So yeah, other we got a monstrosity there. <laughs> all right, let's get the next wing half out here. Ooh, I'll help you. Oh, oh it's got stuck a on little the tape. There we go. So. Obviously, it's going to look identical to that one, but for inspection purposes, we are going to get it out of the bag because we got to make sure we don't need to call up Horizon and yell at them. And oh, we wouldn't yell at them. No, of course not. But Horizon, by the way, Horizon's customer service is phenomenal. So, you know, a lot of people are kind of on the fence about ordering these expensive planes because, you know, some people have damage to them. And you know, fear not because Horizon, it's pretty much a no questions asked. If you have damage to a wing, an elevator, anything, a cowl, they just send you a new one. I mean, they're, they're, they're phenomenal. But you know, this, the damage doesn't happen too often, but it's definitely possible when a, with a big item like this. Yeah, especially during shipping. Yeah, you know, these are built, I think they're built in Vietnam. Right. So, I mean, that's a long trip for some, a big box like this and a fairly delicate item. Here. Bottom looks good. Mm -hmm. I don't see any punctures, scratches, holes, no deformity. Wing looks very straight. Top is perfect. And again, guys, I know a lot of people complain about the wrinkles. That's just the nature of the game dealing with, you know, balsa and shrink covering. Oh, remember Hangar 9 and Horizon, this is all ultra coat. That goes away at the end, nothing to worry about. Looks perfect to me. Like I said, the guy we bought this from, Paul, he did an amazing job keeping it, you know, in a climate controlled area. So he uh, didn't just leave it outside on his back porch, you know. I'm gonna put this upside down actually because the, the flap hinges. Oh, yeah. I don't want them kinda, yeah. you know putting those three marks. Yeah. All right, here we go, here's the manual. So this manual is pretty big. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of different languages, so probably only a fifth of that manual is English. But we'll be reading through that. So this does come with some really nice wheels. Um, Ali did a really good job sourcing out some nice wheels, but in my opinion, they still are just too small. 
And that's pretty much, I think, the consensus that everybody has. These are Sullivan's on an aluminum wheel. And I believe they're eight inch, uh, seven inch, sorry. So these are seven inch. But look how nice these are. Aluminum, Teflon bushing. I mean, like I said, these are very, very nice wheels. But in my opinion, for a bush plane, they are just a little too small. And there's zero oh, give to them, yeah. just solid rubber. <laughs> so they're they're very hard. They seem pretty heavy too. Well, no, they're not. Too a plane heavy. this size, especially a Cub, oh. you don't you don't have to worry about the weight the weight mm -hmm. by any means. But um, it's just zero give to them, you know. And I like a nice, soft, cushy landing, and they just don't look the part of a bush plane. But I like, kudos to Ali because these are very, very nice wheels that we might, you know, maybe use them on another project in the future. This is a good time to show you the wheels we are going to use. <laughs> we got some PMTs from Germany. When you get into bush wheels of this size, your options become pretty limited. Uh, Dubro, what we use on the Carbon Cub, um, there it is up there if you want. So Dubro, the biggest wheel they make is six inch. That's where they stop. I don't know why. Um, so you kind of got to get into some pretty expensive wheels, unfortunately. These are PMTs from uh, Germany. Extremely high quality. These are sealed ball bearings, handmade. Let's see. You see the ball bearings. Mm -hmm. Here's the back. They have actual valves, like normal tire valves. These are the 190, yeah, and they're squishy. So, you know, they're like yeah, they push plane. Give. Yeah, and they're actually pretty light. I don't have a scale out here, but they're, they're lighter than these. Um, these are the 197 millimeter, if you guys are wondering. It works out to about eight inches. So they're about an inch taller than these Sullivans. Now, PMT, they do make one size bigger. They're the 262 millimeter, and they're pretty big. They work out to just about 10 inches. So they're just about a 10 inch wheel. And in my opinion, they just, it depends, I don't know, from some angles they look right, but some angles they look a little too big. So I went with the 197s. So these are a really good option because they're light and they're just really high quality. And um, they have eight millimeter axles, by the way. I don't know where I put my axles. I'll find them later, but, but I do have the axles for them. Um, but yeah, so those are the wheels we are going to use, the PMTs from Germany. And we got those from, Extreme RC, Extreme Flight RC down in Florida, they actually stock those. So if you're looking to order some from the States, Extreme Flight RC has yeah, those. we'll put the link. Yeah, we'll put the link. Uh, but they import them from Germany. You can order them right from Germany, but I think it takes you know, a month or two. But Extreme Flight got those to me in like two days. So thank you, Extreme. All right, let's uh, take off this first layer of separation here. This plane is awesome. Oh my God, look at this stuff. Look at that fuselage. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. So obviously we're gonna do the fuselage last, guys. Those seats are So here's huge. the seats. So we'll open one real quick. These are extremely light. You know, there's nothing to them. It really doesn't need to be. They're mainly just to hold a guy. Same as the uh, same exact style as the Carbon Cub. Very thin plastic. Balsa. Mm -hmm. Back. Oh, yeah but they got clips. So this is actually really cool with this plane because the, the carbon cub you had to Velcro. Yep, looks like these one. have little clips. Is it all like a screw and then you just kind of slide? Uh, yeah, it? that's what it looks yeah, like. That's they, ca they called it rails. So yeah. it looks like you just put it in and <clears throat> click it in. Yep. So that's pretty cool. So we got our seats. Nothing too special there. Um, set those aside. Get our Sullivans over here. Man, those are nice wheels, those Sullivans. So I just don't like them for this plane. Windows, nothing special there. Just gotta cut them and, you know. Fit them in. Yeah, mm -hmm. fit them in. Oh yeah, we had so much fun last time. Yeah. <laughs> um, struts, uh, strut covers. So this is the landing gear fairing. But another thing that we are changing, we are not gonna use the landing gear that comes with the plane. There's the spinner, aluminum back plate. So the spinner. Like I said, it's just an aluminum plate, mm -hmm. like like a plastic spinner. Yeah. Yeah. So big. Super nice. Yeah, this plane. 
I don't want to say this is the biggest plane we'll ever get because I said that on the carbon cub and look what look what we have now. <laughs> uh, electric motor box. So I guess this is as good of a time to tell you guys we're not going electric. <laughs> we're going gas. Yes. So there it is. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. We're our first gas engine on the channel. Actually, this is my first gas engine ever. So yeah, we are not going electric. Throw it no, out. don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this plane is so big, we priced it out and the electric was going to be just way more expensive and gas is just cooler anyway, right? So we got a lot of comments from the carbon cubs. Uh, people wished we had went gas. And I think we might convert the carbon cub to gas in the future, but for now, we have gas on X cub. And you were saying uh, the flight time is a lot longer. Yeah, yeah, you can get gas. longer flight times and you know, the cool factor and, and all that. So we got a DLE, of course. We went with a DLE 61. So we're going single cylinder here, two stroke. This thing makes about six horsepower, so gonna be plenty of horsepower. Here's the ignition, you know, for your spark plug and all that. It's like exhaust gasket, engine standoffs. So DLE engines are very good value because they come with all this stuff that a lot of engines, oh, I shouldn't say a lot, but some engines, DA, DA aircraft, desert aviation, don't come with. So you actually have to buy all this separate. It comes with a muffler, Reset that standoffs, little muffler extension pipe. Here is the engine itself. Very well packaged, kind of that hard molded foam. Look at this bad boy. Very, very nice engine. I'll set this kind of over here for now, Mary. Can... Oh, where is it? So DLE are quickly becoming or have been kind of a best bang for the buck. I mean, they are very, very nicely built engines. 61cc, DLE 61. There's a carburetor, obviously. So like I said, this is our first gas engine, guys, so I have all the accessories. I've been reading a lot about it. We got a lot of gas engine gurus over at our flying field. Spark plug goes in there. It's in the bag, one of these bags, but yeah. Guess I could show you the propeller we're using. <laughs> this is kind of fun. So we got a couple propellers here. This is a 24 by nine Zor, laminated, absolutely beautiful. And then we have the JC Super Prop. This is actually a custom prop for this plane, specifically for this plane. This is a scale propeller from Aircraft International down in Florida. This is a 23 by 10. So we got a couple options here, 24.9, 23.10. But yeah, look how big those are. It's funny, we were looking at the carbon cub propeller and I was blown away how small it was. I was like, there's no way that's the carbon cub propeller. Cause I remember when we first got this, we were like, that thing's huge. <laughs> oh my God, it's so big. But look at the carbon cub propeller next to the- This tiny little guy now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's just funny when you put things next to each other like that. So we are going gas, guys. This is gonna be awesome. Let's continue on. Oh boy. So I'm not gonna open all this small stuff. More engine standoffs. This is the stock gas tank, all the little fiddly bits, the fly flying wires for the tail. Oh, there's the tail, the light for the rudder that goes through. This is another really cool thing that Ali did for this plane. The tail wheel setup on this is absolutely a work of art. He had to work with the, the factory and get special tooling made. Look at this tail wheel. Got actual leaf springs. I mean, look at this machined tail wheel bracket. I mean, this thing is amazing. Just a little foam wheel, but, but this is so nice. What do you think of that, man? Yeah. 
Wow, it's beefy. Uh, yeah, those are these are actually steel leaf springs. Like, I mean, this is literally like what a real cub would have. Just beautiful. What else we got? More uh, just stuff. Like strut fairings or something. Mm -hmm. Gray strut fairings. <clears throat> gas engine mount. So here's the engine mount for the gas, and then the fuel tank goes in there. And we are actually going with a different fuel tank too, because I don't like these opaque plastic tanks. I don't like being able to not see the fuel. So we got a really nice Valley View. Nice clear tank from Valley View RC. And that's where we got the engine, by the way. Valley View RC, awesome, awesome company. Got a lot of really good gas engines. The prices are great, but their fuel tanks are extremely high quality fuel tanks they got the the felt clunk mm -hmm. they're very very nice aluminum cap so we're, we are going with a different fuel tank by the way this is a 24 ounce stock tank a 20 ounce so a little bigger but mainly because it's clear so here's the stock landing gear comes with the plane this is kind of a a contention point too because the stock landing gear is scale this is what the real X-Cub has, is this style landing gear. Just, I think they call it just spring landing gear. It's just basically metal and mm -hmm. it just bends. But unfortunately, on the, the model here, this metal they use isn't up to the task. A lot of people say it bends, it folds. You have a hard landing and it just bends. And I also just don't like the look of it. I don't think it looks like a Cub. I absolutely hate the look of it. So we are not using this. We got the optional, um, Somewhere over here, <laughs> the Inter more mess. cub style landing gear, the articulated, there it is. And, um, you know, looks more like traditional cub gear. <clears throat> Got the shocks, the arms. So it's exactly like the carbon cub, like you see on all cubs. So, you know, articulates. Mm -hmm. So this is from Horizon Hobby, they carry it. So, <clears throat> This is a direct replacement for these. So this is what we're going with. It's exactly like the Carbon Cub, just bigger. But I like this style better. I think it looks better too. And the beauty of this is these are eight millimeter axles, which work directly with these German PMTs. So it's a direct bolt up. Ooh. Spar. Oh my goodness, <laughs> the thing is big. Yeah, there's the spar. Got a little antenna in there. Okay, yeah. Um, two little spars. That might be for the, might be for the back. I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know what those rods are for. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out during the build. So that's pretty beefy. That's a big spar. Looks like a shower curtain rod. <laughs> okay, here's all the struts. Jury struts, nothing, uh, nothing crazy there. The typical airfoil shape. Yep. Metal, obviously. There's the cowl. So this is something we're gonna inspect really good. This is something that a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but some people have uh, damage on. So just like the Carbon Cub, fiberglass cowl. Hopefully we got a good one. But if not, I'm not worried because, like I said, Horizon, they've always done me good. Any damage, like I said, it's almost a no questions asked. You send them a picture and they'll get you a new one right out. It looks absolutely perfect. Very happy. I had zero issues with my Carbon Cub ARF. Zero issues with this ARF. Very high quality parts. I, I feel like these are really nice. You know, there's the fiberglass. Pretty cool. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, we'll kind of. Oh my gosh. Do you need help? This thing. No, no, you're good. Oh boy. This is huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a big plane. <laughs> so how did we mess this up last time? We pulled it out the total wrong way. I think we pulled it out from the back. 
My gosh, look at this thing. There looks like tape score. I think we pulled it out from the back and I think it comes, oh, actually comes, totally I think it comes out from the front. Holy cow. <laughs> this is gonna take two vehicles, both of our vehicles to get to the flying field. That is for sure. It's sealed up front. Yeah, and then the back too. Also, I think you just choose your poison. <laughs> Well, I think the back is oh, open and I think you pull it oh, okay. like out the front. I remember that's kind of how it was on the carbon cub. Just unfold it. Light tape scores here. Oh, yeah, see the back okay. of the bag's open, okay. Right. You wanna grab the plane, I'll grab the bag and I'll pull. Yeah, you got the bag? Yeah, I got the bag. Yeah, so slowly pulling the bag off. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Oh man. man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's huge. Windows just kind of lightly taped yeah, on, so mm -hmm. we'll go with our cool black screw treatment. We're gonna need cool. bigger screws on this one. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need bigger screws. It's all scaled up, so I'm just looking for any rips or puncture holes. Everything looks perfect. Look at the size of this thing. This thing's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, those two little black bars that were in the wing spar bag. Yeah. They're actually the black bars for right here. Oh, so on a cub, the... you'll see two rods okay. right through the windshield. You can see the holes. All right, cool. So that's part of a cub. Let me turn around so you can see the cockpit. So we got a pretty cool cockpit. It's got a kind of a scale decal cockpit oh, with a GPS. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, that GPS. Wow, <laughs> in real life. So they got the firewall pre-epoxied. So we're gonna have to epoxy the motor mount. So we're still gonna have to epoxy all that for fuel, okay. seal it up for fuel. We'll seal all this too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. Yeah, the windows. Another really cool thing with this, the door on the carbon cub was kind of a pain. Oh yeah, that was. So this one has an actual little latch oh, okay Let's see how it oh, works I love it. so when you turn it there's actually two pins so it pulls two pins so let's see how uh, it works it might not oh we got yeah good call hmm lose your mind if that didn't open. i would have been disappointed right away <laughs> foiled by masking tape i'm already foiled by the masking tape <laughs> there we go okay okay now let's try it I hear it. Oh yeah, I hear the springs. Maybe. It, it wants to open up. Is it one of those cases where we got to do the window at the same time or? Oh, maybe. Help it, there we go. Oh, and yeah, careful. So I wasn't turning the thing all the way. Oh, oh I, I see the pins. So yeah. you gotta be super careful because it'll scratch the. Yeah. yeah, so you gotta be careful. But see, I'll, let me turn the little dial. Yeah, that's yeah, kinda, yeah it's hard. Yeah, I can see. see. There you go. And then there's one over here too that's retracting. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So, yeah, that's actually pretty cool, but a little tricky to get my fingers in there. I think uh, looks like there's fingers. some. Looks like there's actually a spot for two bolts you put on there. You can grab from the outside. Oh, okay. But I do like it better than the carbon cub one. It's pretty secure. Very secure. Yeah. Another cool thing with this plane, um, the top hatch. Let me spin it around. Or I should come closer here. So there's actually a top hatch here. So right here, this hatch, we have to put some, uh, Oh. it comes out with magnets. Okay. So you actually put the window in film there? in there. And then this hatch aids in getting to your batteries and everything. Oh, Because okay. when the wings are on, you pull this top hatch off. Okay. And you can just connect everything through the top. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. So I like that a lot. So you gotta put the, see the strong magnets? We mm. just gotta put the glass or the, whatever you call it, plexiglass in there. Okay. Yeah, so we'll cut, we'll cut a piece it out. And uh, this does have a toe release. So that hole right here is for a toe release. On top. So it's in one of these baggies somewhere. Uh, we do have the servo for it. So we are gonna hook up the toe release just, just to have it hooked up, but I don't plan on towing any aircraft with this. But, uh, 
yeah. Fuse slides look perfect to me. There's the, you know, like get to some of the, the servos from the bottom. Yep. I don't see any issues, guys. <laughs> it's big. This is big. When we did with the carbon cub, kind of held the wings up to it. I can't do it with this plane. <laughs> Just only one. I don't want to drop it. Yeah. But you can kind of get an idea. Once both wings are on, I mean. It's going to be pretty big. This is a big plane. It's already most of this table. This table is what, eight feet this, long? This uh, eight foot sheet of plywood, the table. So the plane will be about two feet wider than this build table, the wingspan. I like it. What do you think, Mary? Oh, I love it. I'm so excited. And you know, another reason why we picked this thing, not only because it was such a good deal and bigger, but we love, we started really loving doing the balsa stuff, yeah. right? Like love with the, the balsa. So. Yeah, we really like the carbon cub and the balsa planes. You know, a lot of people say balsa flies better, and honestly, it does. It's just a more rigid plane uh, versus the foamies. The foamies are fun. I love them. Mary loves them. Uh, real affordable, and they're fun to just throw around and throw in your car. But something special about a balsa plane, balsa and you know covered plane. There's something really special about it. it. Feels like more like a real aircraft, and they fly very precise, and they're very rigid, and they just they're, they're just really nice, and they yeah. they look cool. And you get to do all these little upgrades. Yeah. You know the, the wheels. So we got a bunch of other stuff. You know we're going servos. We got nine servos here. We're going with the high tech 645 Metal Gear, probably high tech's most popular servo of all time. Mm -hmm. This is really nice servo, Metal Gear. Uh, we got some extensions, Y harnesses, fuel tubing. Nothing really too exciting to show you. I got uh, going with a dual battery setup. Uh, we got some Spectrum Life batteries. Um, and we do have a Tech Aero Ultra Ibec. So rack over there. somewhere around here. Yeah. I don't know where it is. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's going to control the ignition. So um, all sorts of stuff. We're going dual receiver. So I got a FreeSky RB10 redundancy bus. We're going to hook up two receivers, two batteries. So we got a lot of stuff going. So like I said, this is our first gas engine. So it's going to be kind of a learning process for us. Look at that one. But we're really excited. I do have to say, especially with this one that you ordered, right? Yeah, the scale prop. This is what this is what the real X Cub, the full scale uses. But yeah. it, remember, it's but a, Aircraft International is excellent customer service. So yeah, I, I gotta give a shout out to uh, Aircraft International. So they, you know, they do pro propellers and stuff. And um, this is actually my second prop because the first one came damaged, like unusable damage, and uh, emailed them. Right and they, away. no questions asked. They saw the pictures and they were uh, very, very apologetic. And they sent me out another one right away. And just awesome company. So if you guys need some big propellers, uh, they have Falcon propellers. Um, they got a bunch of other like, yeah. high-end carbon props. Um, but this is very specific to it's this X Cub. So if you beautiful. want the scale prop yeah. for the X Cub, you have to go to Aircraft International. It's gorgeous too. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is a 23 by 10, but they had a couple other pitches. Mm -hmm. This is the one Ali recommended. You know, We're try I out. keep referencing Ali. He's the one, if you don't know, he's the one that designs these big planes for uh, Hangar 9 and Car Horizon. But, um, and then we just got a, a 24.9 Zor. Cause I'm gonna try them both. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, we are got a lot of fun stuff here. So excited. Yeah. I don't know what else to show you guys, but, um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. One thing I do want to run by you guys, so put it in the comments. Um, we want to hear from you. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Do you guys? Did you guys like how detailed we went into the carbon cub? We pretty much did every step, kind of hyper detailed. Just showed you every little step. Do you guys want to see that style format, or do you want to see more of a streamlined? Just show you some of the key features and then kind of move on. You know, do you want a shortened video or just the really, really detailed every single little? Yeah. Kind of thing. Because um, we did, um, what is it, four videos was the build for the carbon? Well, there was five build videos, and then the sixth video was the maiden. Okay. So, I don't know. Do you guys want to see that, that? same format? Or like just one really, video? Or just with not, the... well, it wouldn't be like one video. Maybe like two or three. Oh, just Instead kinda... of six videos, like maybe like three. But just show you key components rather than every little step. Yeah, let us know. We want to hear So, let you. us know. Like Mary said, um, we want to hear from you in the comments. Just what style do you like? Um, I don't know. Some people like the really hyper-detailed builds. Um, 
But anyway, let us know. We'll let it sit for a couple weeks uh, before we actually start, and we'll do a couple, I think we got a couple little other planes in between uh, the unboxing and when we officially start this. So, but we do want to hear from the, the comments. Dealer. So let us know what format you want to see on this, this, uh, this X-Cub. Because uh, it could go either way. We don't care either way. But I uh, just want to see what you guys want to see, you know. So, yeah. I don't know. What, you got anything else to add, Mary? Mm -mm. I think these uh, I know. these big German PMTs are going to look pretty really good. good. I think they're yeah. kind of the right yeah. kind of the right scale. Let me pull that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good scale size, you know. Mm -hmm. These just didn't look right to me. They're too skinny, too. Shiny. Yeah, I know, right? They're new. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We're going to put the links to kind of all this stuff. And if you guys want to see certain things, let us know. Thanks again, everyone.